Welcome to The Creatives. I am your host, Ashley Mahoney, and joining me today is Carla Aaron Lopez. Thank you so much for joining me on The Creatives. It's bomb to be here, girl. I'm yes. happy you excited. You asked yes. me. Yes, it's, it's something of seeing your work since we first met at the West End Mural back in July of 2020 and seeing your work over the last several months. I mean, heck, we're, in, we're midway through January of 2021 now. And yeah. just seeing your work, I'm like, I've got to get her on the podcast at some point. And there, like I was telling you before, there were so many projects that you're working on. I was like, I need to bug her about this. I need to bug her about this. I want to bugger about all of it on a podcast. So we have a lot to cover today, but tell, tell me first off, how are you? How is 2021 treating you so far? Um, probably the coolest 12 days and the most entertaining 12 days of my life. I, I have never experienced the beginning of the year starting the way this one has started. So with that being said, the most entertaining yet exciting 12 days of my life. Well, all good things, because I know right now, heading out of 2020, you had work that was on view at Spirit Square. So tell me about Cultured Contrast. Yeah, so Cultured Contrast, I was contacted by Garrison Gist, who told me he gave my contact information to a former classmate of his that works for the Blumenthal now, Sydney. And um, she just had an idea that she wanted to, for her, find the coolest artists in the city and pulled together this group exhibition that was so showcase their works, including my own. And what I chose to do was start this new year with a completely new body of work that I have never made before, but have been slowly working on. And that, that's how I wanted to start my 2021 was if I'm known in one city as a photographer and when I came back home to Charlotte, I'm known as a collage artist, then this year was just a wonderful, like right place, right time. Let me showcase this new style I've been working on because I generally flip styles every three to five years. So I know that last year was very heavy on text-based, whether you saw that in the Charlotte mural at Camp North End, whether you saw that in President-elect uh, Bi Joe Biden's stop at, also at Camp North End. A lot of good stuff has been happening at Camp North End, but yeah. whether... Whether you saw that in you know, the, the work that was part of that, or if you've been on Beatty's Road Road and you've seen the West End mural, tell me a bit about you know, the, the evolution as a text-based artist and how that will continue or perhaps change in 2021. I'm definitely going to continue it in 2021. And where it originally started was um, when I was in grad school, I was in grad school getting a master's in photography. And I would take notes on top of my photographs from during critique because I felt like if somebody says something good, I know how my brain works. I'm gonna walk out of here and forget what they had said. So write the notation down dead on the photograph. And after like doing that so many times, the start was just a couple of folk here and there saying, okay, I like the writing on this. And it, that has been a trial and error of love. It was never the central focus and toward like after the West End mural and becoming friends with Chad Cartwright, I decided that I wanted in 2020 to focus on my handwriting and figure out how to make that the art. The handwriting is the art. So as now, before we go too far forward, I know we mentioned culture contrast and I do as the, uh, the Busy Bee reporter, I have all the notes about where people can see your work. So you can head over to Spirit Square and see culture contrast through January 24th. So it's not that far away. Yes. It feels like no. it's like, yeah, the 24th, that's the end of the month. You have plenty of time to go see it. But in yeah. fact, it's coming up, you know, pr pretty darn quickly. So make sure you We're head over there. We're still definitely having a closing reception on the 23rd between two to five. And, you know, as always, I definitely want you to mask up and be able to come in and out of the space to experience the works on the wall. But I really, I really, really enjoy doing small shows like that because whoever's curated the amount of artists, will, I will always find somebody new like, oh, I, I don't know who that is and they are fine. I need to know who that is and I'll go get to know that artist. And you mentioned, or we're going to rewind a little bit because I know so, when, when we first met, it was hotter than heck. It was July, the, the exact opposite yeah. of what it is now. It's nice and cold and, you know, bundle up, stay warm kind of weather. But mm. it was the, the heat of July and you were sharing that, you know, where that mural is, it's, it's on Beatty's Ford Road. 
and that's home yeah. for you. That's where you grew up. Yeah. You mentioned how your mural at Camp North End later on in um, you know, the, the months preceding or following that, it was an homage to a fellow BFR native lute and including his lyrics in there. So tell me mm. a bit about you know, your genesis as, as an artist, how it all began for you and what it's like being a charlatan in the, the current uh, interesting climate that we're in, one, because of pandemic, and two, because the city's a lot larger than even when I got here a couple of years ago. I'm sure seeing it as a native, you're like, this is a, this is a totally different place. Um, it's less green. Can I say that? Like (laughs) growing up, Charlotte was just green, honey, like green on the ground, green in the trees. The sun even looked different. And what I've learned is that because more and more trees are coming down, it's kind of like this entire end goal together to just see the skyline downtown. But it, it also makes everything brighter unnecessarily. So The only other location I've experienced that level of brightness from the sun is Los Angeles. And Los Angeles is very flat until you get into the mountains. And that's how someone like me, a native, knows the difference between past and present Charlotte. It's all connected to the color green. Um, When I was growing up, and I I grew up on Beta's Floor Road, like I have stayed across from Eastland Mall. There was another time when we were in another section of Charlotte. I remember what the house looks like, but I can't remember the section because that's how small I was. But I do know that most of my life was spent between Hyde Park and Trinity Park. So I clarified for my family and people who ask me where I'm from. My family's from Hyde Park, but I honestly grew up in Trinity Park for so long that you know, drugs have always been a part of American culture, but to see drugs come into a once middle-class Black community, and it changes the entire social construct of that community to where a child can no longer go outside as if overnight, you know, that's something that it, it doesn't leave you. The thought of it doesn't leave you. So any support for the West Side I can bring to the table, will I will, whether it's clarification of history um, a lot of the Black people that built up Betas Fort Road are still there and still live in those houses. And in my personal opinion, that's like two, three phone calls and I'll find who I'm looking for if I need to seek more information about something. I left in 2001 because I graduated from North Mech and I moved to Durham and I got my undergrad from North Carolina Central University. That's our family school. Some of our family members have gone to PWIs, of course, or a different uh, HBCU, but majority of us have attended North Carolina Central University. And then from there, I went straight to Atlanta to go to SCAD for an MFA in photography and an MA in printmaking. I like digital and analog things. And then when you put them together, it just makes something even happier, you know? When I came back, I came back to a different city. I've always come back home for the holidays because I'm kind of private because I'm very family oriented. I will not let you in, but home is home. Like I would just go home and whatever Charlotte I left, that was, that was it. Like, Oh, there's nothing here. There's nowhere for me to go. Boy, when I moved back home from Atlanta, I was like, so y'all have some key players. Y'all have some influencers. Y'all got new spots. I feel like I can go kick it at. And, um, I'm gonna go do that for a little while and snatch up this teaching license, quit art or pause for a second. And then I'll determine if I wanna do it again. I got started on my new art journey in 2019 between Goodyear Arts and Black Market Charlotte. And once I came over to Black Market Charlotte, it was like, okay, this is home because every little piece of stereotypical, discriminating, microaggressive comment that I experienced in grad school I don't have to deal with it in this space. It's a studio like any other studio. You come in and you make work in your studio. I just like to make work at the sounds of really loud Southern hip hop. Makes me happy. Well, hey, I feel like there's an element of happiness during the creative process that is not not necessarily necessary, but it's definitely nice to have. I feel like it Mm -hmm. fuels it a bit. And- Oh yeah. You mentioned you came back to, you know, a, a totally different city and it feels like you can blink. And I'm sure that even once, you know, Uptown opens back up again, whenever that may be, it'll have a very mm-hmm. different feel because, you know, everyone's been kind of outside of Uptown unless you live there or you pass through there. 
And Mm -hmm. now it's a matter of that construction still going on. It's, it's going to have a very different, well, not necessarily different. It's a more, more grandiose. That's, that's what I feel every time. Like I'm walking in somewhere, I'm like, and you're new, you're new. Okay. You're also new. Yes. 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 And it is very grand. You are very correct about that because Charlotte of yesteryear was not grand at all. Mm -hmm. It was classy and historic, (laughs) but not grand. I, I agree with you. It is, it's definitely changing, but some places that are not changing so much are a little bit on the outskirts of Uptown over in you know, the East over Elizabeth neighborhoods with the Mint Museum, mm-hmm. Randolph. Yes. And yeah. you, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're one of 24 recipients of the latest round of culture vision grants from ASC, and yes. you have a project coming up at the Mint Museum. Yes, I do. It's going to be super dope. So what I figured out was I wanted to put on an underground art exhibition in the Mint. And I, what I essentially did is every artist ego trips across the board. If they say that they don't, they're freaking lying to you, all right? What I chose to do with my life was put my ego on pause as an artist and really just get to know and understand how Charlotte's art scene works. It is very reserved to you know the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. But what I found, just kind of meeting new people across the city, is that you're dope and you're dope too. You're dope and you're dope too. A lot of businesses are asking the same people over and over again to produce works for them, or they're outsourcing works instead of utilizing who is available here in the city. 2020 was hard because it definitely ripped the veil off for a lot of people. And if that is the case, if that is the behavior moving forward, then I'm going to do what I do best, which is showcase art and artists in these traditional spaces that would not normally invite artists of color into that space. What I am aware of is that, you know, I know a lot of Black people, I know a lot of Latino people, and I know some white people, but not even enough South Asian brothers and sisters. And I want this exhibition to be the start of something in the city that can continue showcasing artists of color of all types and eventually get to, you know, our physically and intellectually disabled brothers and sisters because they have the ability to create works as well. That's the exhibition I want completely underground. We're gonna pop up, it's gonna go away. So if you do not attend, you'll never know who's available in the city, but also we have to work with what we got, which is a true nature of art as well, in order to do something dope for one night and one night only and leave a lasting impression that will hopefully change a lot of minds to, you know, just collaborate with someone different. I've spent a lot of 2020 talking to white people about the nature and the importance of collaborating. It is okay to collaborate with someone who does not look like you or even say the same language as you, but we're both speaking the American version of English, right? It is okay to go outside of your house and work with that person. It is okay to give that person the keys when the time is necessary for certain projects. I want this to be the beginning of not only artists, but also small and medium business owners to come out of their box and go, oh my God, you're dope. I have this wall or I would like to purchase pieces for X, Y, and Z reasons and person, Uh, you know, just any, whatever reason they want. I do want you to buy more art. Art does make the day go by so much better because five minutes staring at your favorite art piece, you might realign all your thoughts and be able to continue with the rest of the day. The question is, how am I making artists of color more accessible to these small, medium, and large business owners? The Mint Museum's a wonderful start. So as you look at this, is it kind of like, all right, the Mint Museum is a great starting point, like you said? Yes, it is a great starting point because if if it wasn't for the Mint, I wouldn't want to become an artist. But at the same time, because, you know, when you're in elementary school or what they used to do, you know, everybody had to go to the Mint Museum. And I left home and came back and it wasn't just the Mint anymore. (laughs) You know, the Afro-American Cultural Center became the Harvey B. Gantt Center. Uh, The Beckler popped up out of nowhere. And then now there are two locations of the Mint. It's like, huh, there's a lot of space to work with here. And I think that it is phenomenal and almost revolutionary that the people who own, run, and operate the Mint are allowing me to have this opportunity in between their exhibitions. And 
there's there's that once upon a time moment and i love that you referenced the mint because that was where i was going to go it's like what was your once upon a time moment what really sparked that you know this is something that i i love and i'm passionate about and this to be it's almost a almost romantic in the sense of this is something i want to do this is going to go somewhere so tell me a bit about you know those early memories of the mint and how that inspired you to want to become an artist it was always cool walking around the space and seeing pictures on the wall or the small pieces on the um on the pillars and housed in glass and honestly the mint on randolph doesn't have any artwork i liked what was so cool about it is that it was artwork on a wall in a location in my town that's what turned me on so from that point forward how can I be the person in that space with that kind of work? And I had to figure that out, of course, over, over my lifetime. I'm still living, but, you know, I finally figured some things out at 37. Praise Jesus on that. Lord have mercy. And it starts with the mint. Like, what, what other museum was available at that time? The Afro-American Culture Center was more focused on programming than actual art mm -hmm. over time. It became more of an art center, you know, for black art in Charlotte and Charlotte specifically, but it wasn't like the place for art. I will say my love and want to be an artist started with the mint. The content that I wanted to deal with started with the Afro-American Cultural Center because I always wanted to see my reflection and the mint just didn't give me my reflection. So it just became a, how can I put images that people that look like me in this space? And that's what helped me become the artist that I am today. Going on this journey of making sure that, you know, it's, it's a matter of, like you said, representation is so important. I feel like that is something that has been said, said, and said again so many times, but people finally, for some, you know, reason in 2020 is like, okay, we're ready to hear it now. It's like, People yeah, been telling you this I, for years. <laughs> yeah, people have been saying it for years. And, you know, I'll enlighten you to a conversation I had with my mom where she looked at me and she said, why are white people tripping about Ahmaud Arbery? And I said, because he was doing something that everybody do. He went running. Houses was being built. He went to go check out the houses the same way everybody done pulled over a car every now and then and walked into a structure of a house what made it go downhill was that I swear to God, it looked like a scene out of A Time to Kill. That's the moment it went downhill. Like, this is real life. This is not a movie. And that's the start of people becoming as emotional as they have and are. Like, it's like past and present all at once. Like, you're technically, you're still emotional. You're just kind of going with the motions in your everyday life. But because of one event in the mainstream, what's the words I'm looking for? Like, because of one event and the events thereafter, we're still dealing with people that have chosen to not face the true horrors of American culture. We're all American. I'm, I'm from North Carolina. I'm not from anywhere else. I, I'm from Charlotte. You can go to Presbyterian Hospital and pull my birth records and tell me what time I was born. I don't know what time I was born, but I showed up, you know? Um, so I, I, I can't go nowhere. <laughs> like, I'm from here, you know? But the horrors that I have to deal with, even though mine may not be extreme, and that's another conversation for another day, mine may not be extreme, yet I still have to deal with some sort of psychological horror of American racism. When you look at the, the medium of choice is, is art for these conversations and seeing mm -hmm. the way that, you know, whether it's Spirit Square or whether it's Black Market at Camp North End, whether it's the mural at Camp North End, whether it's West End on the, that mural on Beatty's Ford Road, and now heading toward the mint or even last year in South End with all, the first part of Off the Plantation, which I'm going to bug you about that shortly. But seeing cool. that evolution, there are so many elements of this, this continual conversation. And as you move forward, you're also a teacher. 
mm-hmm. how how does this influence your your role in in that regard? Well, I'm a lucky teacher. I get to be an art teacher, so I can teach whatever I want. I don't have to teach a test. So if that's the case, then if you're a good teacher, you'll know how to have a difficult conversation with children and children specifically, because of course you don't want them to go home and tell your parents about the conversation you had with them and it's completely misconstrued. But when they have a frank question, you need to give them an answer that they can digest and process and ruminate with over time. Having difficult conversations with students has helped me have difficult conversations with adults just by understanding point blank period empathy. If I were to put your shoes on today, what would I feel? If I were to take a walk in your life, what would I see? So I choose to think about what I'm going to say in those moments versus blurting out something emotionally. I can blurt out emotionally to my family because I can talk to my family. But when you want to help other people understand, you may have to take different avenues and utilize the English language in different ways to get them to a place of understanding to where a few things will happen. They want to produce more work. They want to change a habit, a behavior. They want to confront weaknesses and really hold on and dig into strengths because all of those things are a part of the human experience. It's just in America, because they, America has come up with the term black, America has created black culture. We have this kind of really ugly thing that I think is beautiful that has to be clarified on a daily basis. So it doesn't make sense that uh, magically someone is appalled by an event like George Floyd or Breonna Taylor. It's appalling that many people of color across different ethnicities have to experience that kind of terror on an everyday level. Everything just doesn't get reported about. Social media sucks, this is without a doubt, but one thing that social media has been extremely helpful with is, if this is who you are, this is who you are, a young woman just accused a little boy of stealing a phone and he never had the phone. But she gets airtime. And the little boy will more than likely be demonized in the media for what? When I had my child, I had my child in the age of Trayvon Martin. You know, yeah, I'm an artist. I I got all kinds of like little crazy mental health issues that I, you know, go beat up some wood over. Like, ah, that made me frustrated. I'm going to go destroy something that it's not going to affect me or other people, you know, but to internalize that, knowing that my job from this point forth is to make sure this dude stays alive. That's kind of heavy. A lot of people don't have to deal with that in the U S my job is to make sure my child stays alive. My job is to make sure that no one falsely accuses him, accuses him of anything that he did not do. And I'm going to lose my cool. My job is to keep my cool, you know? My job is to show him that, no, you should not be scared of anything. Mommy is fearless and so are you. Because if I don't instill those things in him first, then the world show will make him a person he may not ever was. And how, I have to ask this as a a two-part question, how old is your son? And depending on that answer may lead into, have you had those conversations with him? Differently, he's eight. So what I like to say, because humans are humans at the end of the day, that's not black people, that's not white people, that's humans across the board. Baby, don't be scared of the monsters in the movie. The real monsters look like me and you, and we have to figure out who is okay and who is not, and that's real hard, all right? So if you get the funny feeling in your stomach about somebody, it's okay to bounce. It's okay to leave. It's okay to get the hell out of there. It is okay. Go with the funny feeling in your tummy. He, I've chosen to not allow him into the public school setting, even though I am a public school teacher, because there are a few things that are extremely important to me, such as Black history alone. 
this is the foundation I want you to jump from before I release you into the world so that you know, like many other ethnicities and nationalities on earth, that you have roots, you have a foundation. I make a lot of black people angry, even when I tell them like, I have peace in the fact of knowing the general areas of the plantations my family came from. Because what that tells me is I just didn't just poof out the sky. My story starts in America. And more specifically, it starts in the wards. My story starts in the wards because that's where my family ended up on my grandmother's side and my grandfather's side. They started there. So my story starts there. My story starts in Charlotte. It's up to me to provide the details so you don't tell my story incorrectly. And correct me if I'm wrong, but second word, right? I know we've talked about this previously, but did you, I feel like our last conversation yeah. in, in November, you, you mentioned having, I want to say, was it, it was your aunt who grew up in second word? All um, I'm just convinced okay. all the black people came from the wards in Charlotte. <laughs> okay. I'm just convinced. Yes. There was okay. one of them wards where it was no black people, but all the wards. That okay. that's where I am because I cannot okay. remember. But I'm gonna tell you right now, when my family hears this, they're gonna correct me. So whatever they say, <laughs> that's the answer. The uh, the fam family always has a way of like we know we 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 just we know, <laughs> and our word is yes. our word is gospel. I'm like. Okay, mm -hmm. that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. there, there, there's a still still a debate in my family about you know whether or not you know Italian versus Swedish and so forth. And you're like, that's what you were saying, but that's not what Dad said. We're going with 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 what Dad said. Dad Dad's word yep. is law. Yep, yep. Just just like that. So one of them will come out and correct me. Mm -hmm. But second word is the phrase that sticks out the most in my brain. My grandma might tell you something different. She's the one. You said like your daddy. She's the mm -hmm. one. Like, oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay. not going to war against that. You're right. <laughs> it's like I'm just going to concede. You win. That, that's mm -hmm. it. The end. Mm -hmm. Pick <laughs> but, your battles wisely, Ashley. Pick your battles yeah. wisely. <laughs> hey, if if 2020 taught us anything, it is no what. Like like you said, there there's a time and a place, and it's a matter of choosing which which one. Wait, which one is it? Which one are we go? Which one are we going for? But yeah. not not too far from Second Ward, I think. I mean, I, I we used to walk it when our office was on Camden Road in South End. Every time there was an exhibit preview at you know the Mint or the Beckler or the Gant, it would be you know me and a cup of coffee and that walk over two seventy seven. So about mm -hmm. a mile down the road at Elder Gallery, last fall was the first part of Off the Plantation with you as well as Dammit Wesley. And for those who are listening for the first time, Dammit Wesley is the co-owner of Black Market at Camp Northen, the studio space that Carla is at. So tell me a bit about part two, because I know that's coming up in February. All right, so a few things, um, because the Rona is real. Mm -hmm. It has been rescheduled from February to May 1st, and May 1st is a Saturday. So one, we had to push it back because Governor Cooper did go back to certain COVID restrictions mm -hmm. and only 10 people can be in the space at, the at a time. Well, between us, the artists, Sonia Pfeiffer and her staff, that's 10 people. So we would literally be only a, we would literally only be able to allow people in one at a time, which is not feasible for a performative experience. So we've all spoken and we've agreed on that date and a eight hour time slot from 12 to 8 p.m. So folk can come out to the South End and have a wonderful black ass experience. We'll see how this goes when we get there, Ashley, okay? <laughs> I can meet. only do so much, but South End is still like question marks for me. It's yeah, S South End is um oh how how do I say this with loving kindness? Well, somebody South said it for me on Florida. Uh, I mean, on Facebook, South End is the Florida of Charlotte. That that's a good way to put it. That's a really good way you know, to put it. Yeah, once they said that, I was like, that's why I'll be going over there. Oh, okay, <laughs> I'll go to Dilworth first at least. Yeah. Yes, uh, South End's um, 
it was wonderful when our office was there and I, uh, I say this constantly, but I'm like, yeah, we're, we're up in, in Derrida now. And uh, I think it's a, uh, it, it, it was an interesting move. I do miss being able to walk everywhere, but yeah, um, mm -hmm. South End. What I, what I will say is the challenge that I have in front of me is, a, is creating an entirely emancipated black experience in an area of Charlotte that only sees black people and black culture as commodity. So once I wrap my brain around that, I'll know I am successful. That is the perfect, perfect description of, of South End because I'm pretty sure, you know, when, when you look at that area of, you know, Dilworth, South End technically en encompassing Dilworth and, and Wilmore, there are people who are like, no, this is just South End. Look at me in my apartment yeah. and da, da 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 Not not to throw too much shade on anyone, but no, it's it's not shade. It's just difference in neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And you know, what we experienced in October is that even for the classic patrons of Elder Gallery, we gave them an extremely uncomfortable experience. I mean, the fact that I only had one simple request during my performance, which was, if you would like to come to where I am, I need for you to ask me my permission. I'm not going to ask you your permission. A lot of the times Black women are forced to ask permission or it's a vice versa thing where people feel like they can invade a Black woman's space just because she's a Black woman. And it doesn't work that way the amount of people that were either turned off or hit with intense emotions because it, it clicked in their brain, the easy part, you didn't want to ask me my permission to come over into my space. You just wanted to walk up on me and think that it's okay. It's not okay. Whether I'm black, white, yellow, green, brown. Why can't you just ask me my permission? And people really got upset over it. Some people played into it and those people, they were a lot of fun. They were like, Oh, excuse me, King Carla, can I come into your space? Sure, you want a beer? Like, if that's all I'm asking you to do, look at how simple the yes was. Mm -hmm. But now you're in your own turmoil that you created for yourself, probably left out the building and said, I did it when I ain't do it, because you didn't want to ask my permission to walk and view and explore and become a part of my space. My space that was designed and created for every black girl that has to utilize self-destructive behaviors to just simply escape the everyday struggle of living. Damn near every American self-medicates on something from drugs to shoes to food. So when you're in my space, I do need for you to ask my permission because I am escaping the reality that we have created as American life. Yeah. Is this something in terms of that component, will that continue in the May show or will it be something brand new or will it be added on to, or is it that that's to be determined? I like it. I like it. Added on to, and I'm coming with an entourage of black girls. The question is, I don't know how many. Ooh. Well, hopefully, That'll be cool. I hope COVID gets it under control by then because I mean, honestly, I will, I'm just envisioning seeing all of that unfold. Yes, yes. That yes. COVID gets your act together so we can see all of this happen. I, I need you to get your act together, COVID. So, right. Yes. Right. We could do a hard pause of February and March if people would just stay inside. <laughs> I mean, with, that Mecklenburg County just issued you know, their new directive of basically the, the same thing that everyone should have been doing from, from the get-go. But we'll see how, how things continue to go. It's, um, mm -hmm. If you had told me back in March of 2020 that we would be where we are now, I probably would have laughed a little bit. And um, in June, like, yeah, the peak will be in June, and then things will be back to normal. Nope. Nope, mm -hmm. nope, nope. Here we are. Here we are doing yep. this via Zoom, sitting on stacks of pillows mm -hmm. in our podcast studio. And by podcast studio, I mean basically the closet. But it works. Mm -hmm. So. You look beautiful, girl. You need my artwork behind you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Hey, I, uh, that is the, the goal for 2022. <laughs> Got student loans to knock out first. And then I'm like, that, that will be my present to myself after. after Ooh, girl, get your freedom. That's it. Mm -hmm. 
Whew, mm -hmm. Please get your freedom from that. That, that is a heavy burden I bear right there, just in two little words. Mm -hmm. Students and loans. Yes, yes. They're, um, we'll be interested to see whether or not the, uh, the new president goes forward with that, uh, that pledge of knocking 10K out for everyone who's a federal borrower. We'll see. Holding you to that. You, mm -hmm. you campaigned on it. Keep your words, sir. Please so we, do. Yes. It, it will, um, I'm going to digress. I could talk, we could have an entire podcast on student loans and it would just be, it would be a long one, but we're, we're oh, I'm, uh, I'm here for it. Bring me on for the refund check episode. <laughs> <laughs> I got stories for days on refund checks. Oh, it's, Hey, we're, we're going to have to, we're ha we will definitely have to come back to that. But before I let you go, I do want to ask you about how things will transpire in terms of putting everything together for the Mint show. I know that, mm. you know, like you said, right now we're in that state of limited capacity, especially indoors and granted, you know, the Mint, it's a little bit larger space, but mm -hmm. still limitations are limitations. So how does yeah. all of that look going forward? So when I originally wrote, my um, plan for the exhibition, I put in there, like one thing I'm definitely gonna continue is whatever the requirements the Mint has in terms of COVID protocols to continue those requirements. Like mm -hmm. it, it doesn't make sense to me that we're just gonna drop all of our new public health precautions just out of the blue. I think it's a behavior that's just here now. This is something that's going to continue moving forward. So whatever those things are, that's what I want to follow. So if it's only 25 people max, and it's just 25 people at a time, like keep moving, take the pictures, make the contacts, if it's a case like that. Um, small groups congregating in an area. And when I think small, I think anywhere from like three to five, that will be okay as well. But whatever they have to follow, I have no problems following as well because in my opinion, this is a wonderful opportunity. If I never get this opportunity again, I want to make sure that I do right by what's been given to me. Well, I cannot wait to see all of it come to fruition. I know we have to wait a little bit, but we will uh, we'll definitely be looking forward to when it when it all comes in and do you have some of the names in mind of of who you want on this lineup or is it going to be a okay wait and, wait and see wait and see uh it's a wait and see and carla's probably going to go bully about 50 people in this city <laughs> you're like you're gonna shit. be you're gonna be involved in this and you're gonna have a good time that's all that's mm -hmm. all we're gonna say on that give me give me my shit <laughs> we're gonna put it on the wall Put the line on the resume. You was in a museum. Yes, you was, baby. Now, next steps, get them to purchase. <laughs> so will that be the goal of the night? It's like it's a one-time only and every, everything here available? The, for sale? So the, for the one night, I want it to flat out be an experience. And okay. if a sale happens, then that ball is going to get pushed into the artist courts. Because it's so new, it's something that has never happened in Charlotte before, aside from Art Beats and Lyrics, which is mm -hmm. coming out of Atlanta and traveling across the U.S. Mm -hmm. This is something that is strictly Charlotte and Charlotte only. Natives, transplants, like who lives here and who are these paint people painting all these spaces? It's like I'm, every time I get to know one person, a new person pops up that I see on somebody else's Instagram page. And I'm like, ooh, I got to go get to know them too. So I, I hope it becomes something that can be duplicated again and again with different artists over time. I really think that's a great idea and the best option moving forward. Like, I don't want to see the same people all the time. I definitely want to see some new folks because folk are always moving here. And then quarantine really gave people a lot of time to explore hobbies that they now want to be their full-time careers. Give them a chance. Okay. Well, hey, it's, gosh, 2021, for, first 12 days. And like we said in the beginning, it's busy for you, but it's a good kind of busy. Mm -hmm. It's a good kind of yeah, busy. Yeah, it's a good busy. I, I don't, don't, don't want to not be busy. I don't hands out of hands of the devil. I'm good. I didn't experience that life in my 20s. I'm all right on that. I don't want to do that again. Busy, bored, busy. Well, I'm busy is going to win every time. You're exhausted, yep. but it's a good, it's the good kind of exhausted. We'll take that over being bored every day. 
Absolutely. And plus, I get a better night's sleep. I just fall out. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Well, as everything moves forward, what's the best pay way? Of, I mean, I know that I, I shamelessly stalk your Instagram all the time. So how can people get in contact with you? What's the best way to get connected with you, whether you know, it's Instagram or email? The gram is the best way, um, mainly because if you see me, I can see you too, or I can see who you connected to and shout them a little holler and be like, okay, so who's this? Mm -hmm. You know, um, like I told you about my son, uh, monsters are not real. We just enjoy watching them on TV. Monsters look like me and you, and the gram is a wonderful place for me to just see who follows you as well and shout them a little holler. But I always answer my messages. And um, I just like it more like, why Facebook Messenger? Why, why use that? I, mm -mm. No, just hit me on the gram, call it a day. I'm convinced that, I mean, honestly, if it was up to me, I'd be like, Instagram is the only form of social media we need. We don't, we yeah. have everything else, but I'm like, can we just stick with one? Just, just one, just have a little party in this one spot. But mm -hmm. I was like, let's take it on Twitter. Let's take it on Facebook. Let's take it on TikTok. I'm like, no, no. Instagram, just Instagram. No. But no. people can follow you at I am King Carla on Instagram. Yep. Head over there. Because I am. Yes. Oh, I am King Carla. I know that you've explained it to me before, but before I let you go, Explain oh, because yeah, everybody yes. loves the name. Yes, <laughs> yes. I, I love the story behind it too. So, so tell tell our listeners about why why King Carla. Because even though I'm from Queen City, you ain't gonna give me no damn crown. So I snatched that bitch, made myself royalty. I am King Carla. Love it. I know that when people are listening to this, like they can't see my fist going up in the air and me basically saying touchdown, but yeah, that's, that's it. I, I love, I love that. I absolutely love that. So make sure you head over Instagram. I am King Carla. And as 2021 continues, we'll be bugging mm. you a lot more. Got the I'm pleasure okay to meet. that, Ashley. We got the pleasure to meet you in 2020, but don't don't you worry. We're so we'll go we'll be around for a lot of 2021, 2022. The works will be like, hello, we have we have questions. We have all sorts of questions. <laughs> no, I'm totally down for this. This this is a family dream, you know. Like being from Charlotte, it's like, bro, I'm in Charlotte Post. <laughs> More people would be excited to be in the observant. I'm like, no, I'm excited to be in the post, yo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Every Thursday, every Thursday since 1906. And it's right. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you're like, Hey, you're like, Oh, this, this new media outlet. I'm like, nah, y'all. Charlotte Post has been the voice of the black community since you could combine our ages, throw in someone else's <laughs> age and you'd still need someone else's age. So yes, you would. Oh yeah. <laughs> Go, going on sheesh, go, a century and let's see. Oh God. This 14. Is, a century in 14 years? 15? 14? Yep. 15. Math. 15? This is, mm -hmm. hey, this is why I'm a journalist because math, not, well, it was my strong suit once upon a time, but that's another story for another time. So. All right. An astrophysicist that graduated from Princeton and worked at NASA was my photo professor. And he couldn't spell worth a damn. <laughs> <laughs> don't even <laughs> so don't even worry about it. We all, we all find balance. We've all, we've all got our space that works for us, and you know, mm -hmm. I'm sure he's great with numbers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Couldn't spell worth a damn. It's okay though. We still love them. <laughs> well, hey, we're definitely going to be bugging you, and until next time make sure that you head over to the charlottepost.com that's where all the fabulous content happens that's where we've been bringing you all these stories you know from the oh gosh from again longer than both of us have been alive but yeah. good times so make yeah. sure that this coming thursday the well if you're listening to this after the 14th then it'll be next thursday but whenever you're listening to this Check us out in print every Thursday. Head over to 5118 Princess Street. We are in the Dorada neighborhood. That's where you can pick up a copy or just become a subscriber and have it delivered to your door. Or if you're like, I don't want to have print products, you know, I'd rather just have the digital experience. We've got that too. CharlottePostNewsPaper.com. So go do that. But until next time, Carla, thank you so much for joining me. It was a pleasure. I'm your host, Ashley Mahoney. Thank you for listening. <laughs>